The Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding, Episode 4, Posture and the Seven Chakra System. Welcome to the Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding. This is your co-host, Tyson Bannigan, with The Wellness Show. And your host today is Batista German, Master Body Designer. And we're really excited about this show. Yeah, we're always excited because it, we get to talk about amazing things. And today the topic is posture and the seven chakra system. So now we're going to the spiritual side even more than we have in the previous shows. So I'm looking forward to this. So Batista, back, welcome to the show. And uh, let's get started. Hey, hi. So I'm very excited to continue this series. Um, again, you know, I'm. it's been a, a mission of mine to connect all the dots between the physical and the es esoteric and the spiritual. And uh, posture is one of those things that is probably the most overlooked aspect of a healthy lifestyle but also spiritually speaking it's something that we don't quite talk about too much i mean i i've been in a, in a spiritual circles where in a meditation the the leader of the meditation would say oh uh, make sure to hold your posture so the energy will flow so we we talk about it and it's like um, you know it's mentioned that it's important but there's no real tools or you know any it, it just kind of stays at, at that you know so would you agree with so, that yeah is it i think it said something more than putting books on top of your head and learning how to balance them exactly uh, it's something that something we that so yeah it's definitely more than holding a book over your head posture is actually a lifestyle in a state of being Okay, and this is why I like to make the connections between the chakras and the posture because they are interconnected and they work together. And we're going to dig deeper into this. But really, when you are aligned, it's it's not it's a state of being. It's a state of consciousness, you know. And often we we forget we forget to to make those connections between the actual physical body and the spiritual principles that we learn okay so first of all um you know if we look at first of all what is bad posture how do we get it so there's a lot of a lot of reasons why a person could have bad posture and it could be genetic it could be uh, from past life you know and we're gonna in a further episode we're gonna talk more about emotion and things that get traps in the body and what we carry from lifetime to lifetime. But for this, for this um, episode, I wanted to kind of keep it uh, kind of practical and kind of matter of fact a little bit. So, so in essence, you know, when we are in the womb, we are protected, we are in the fetal position, right? So we are all crawled up and balled up and this is how we get nurtured and this is how we come into the world. But once we are, once we're born and we learn to stand, then the body naturally is taking, uh, straightening up and then we have a nice uh, curvature. So having good posture doesn't mean that your body is straight up. The spine actually has three curves that forms, you know, that that holds your body up. So when we, when when we um, are not conscious, and it all comes down to consciousness again, right? It's all about consciousness. So we go by our day, we uh, do exercises, or we we take the laundry out, or we go do tennis, or you know, whatever we do we a lot of times we're not really conscious of our uh, movement of the biomechanic move, movement that, um, that we do so what happens is we start creating muscular imbalances in the body so what that means is we uh, you know we all have like a stronger side than than the other that's kind of normal right so once um a body part becomes stronger than the other and it kind of works like a domino effect. So it starts pulling your body 
from like it's a tug of war okay and it start pulling your body out of alignment and the more that happens the more the posture gets distorted okay so that's how uh, and uh, for example uh, one of the main uh, most common postural uh, mis misalignment now that we find is forward head posture that's when the head gets pushed forward in front of the of the shoulders and we so why can, does that happen good question uh, i was just going to come to this you know <laughs> Physically speaking, physically speaking, we can blame it on uh, working on the computer. We can uh, we can blame it on texting all day long. Uh, you know, we can blame it on the lifestyle, really. But there are energetic uh, reasons for that too, which I'm going to come to this. Okay, because everything okay. is everything is interconnected. But if you just look at the at the ana anatomy, okay think about it this way the the head is actually as heavy as a bowling ball have you ever gone bowling yeah it's been a while but yeah i that, that's pretty heavy it's really heavy so now imagine that that's how much your head weighs okay and for every inch that the bot that the head is out of alignment it can put six to eight pounds of pressure on your spine. Additional oh, yeah, that's, pressure. That's amazing. Yeah, additional pressure. So for every inch, so when you think about, sometimes you look around and you see how, how bad it is for some people, that actually puts a lot of pressure on the spine and it creates all kinds of problems okay not only when you have a postural misalignment it creates stagnation in the body it prevents the flow of all the the blood the you know the neurochemicals and everything but it can pro produce um neck pain uh, arthritis fibromyalgia all kinds of of problems that just because of bad posture so a lot of times and i and i like to talk about this because a lot of people say <clears throat> Oh, uh, I, I was just taking the laundry out and my back went out. Mm -hmm. or, or, oh, I just did this little thing and my back went out and now I can't get out of bed. I have to have surgery or I got to do this. It doesn't happen like this. Disc damage occurs from micro traumas a lot of consecutive micro traumas over time it's like if you tug at a, at a rope right it's going to get damaged and it's going to still hold 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 and then uh maybe at the last last little bit you're going to go like this and it's going to snap okay that's what happens to a lot of um when we when we have back problem neck problem and all this this is how it happens from micro trauma so i'm saying this because the first thing to become aware of is our uh, how we move on day-to-day -day basis what we do how do we hold things you know it's it's again about consciousness it's about staying in the moment and being aware of where our body is at and starting to really be conscious of how we move our body how we carry things how we how we um yeah how we do things that's the first step you know to avoid long term issues but it's not that easy no it's not that easy <laughs> you know i think uh I mean, my nickname when I was a kid, my dad used to call me Bones because I used to just sort of flop down in a chair. So okay. a lot of my okay. bad posture comes from literally, you know, just uh, lying like a sloth in a chair. There's no support for my back, you know, sort of everywhere, sort of, sort of flopping around. So it's not just us how we stand, it's how, how we sit and how we relax as well to, to rest the spine, I would imagine. 
absolutely it's about it's about everything okay it's it's about every little and again in spirituality we learn to stay in the moment to live in the moment we talked about this in the other episodes when it had to do with the nervous system or the yin yang and it's all it's really what it boils down to it's always about being conscious of what we do and that's another topic we're going to talk about meditation versus active meditation which brings us back to living in the moment so you know to get back to to posture uh, let's see what it does emotionally okay when we have bad posture posture doesn't only affect us physically uh, and creating a lot of uh, illnesses and stagnation and the things that we just talked about, pain, pain, a lot of pain, shoulder pain. Did you know that it can even affect your jaw, how you eat? Carpal tunnel, it can affect because it can pinch nerves in the, in the neck that can produce tingling in the fingers. You know, people uh, run to the doctors for, for ailments and they sometimes fail to look at just some of the more basic reasons. The, why they are you know having pain but emotionally speaking when you think about it um have you ever have you ever read um saw that little cartoon from um what's what's a uh, charlie brown charlie brown about posture it's very very cute charlie brown is like this and he's all depressed or i forget exactly how it work but the gist of the cartoon is that if you if you stand up and you hold your head up then you can't be depressed you know because it changes everything ener energetically you know so when we are depressed think about it like this when we when we um when we have uh, pain or something you know we can go like this we slouch down we we hold the emotions in like this you know so uh in terms of um, mood behavior, depression, uh, and all these these um, mood, uh, um, what you call it, states of being, you know, posture is a huge has a huge effect on it. Uh, and so again, I'm I'm always asking the question. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? You know, so do you think positive thoughts to be happy, or can you work your body to create a positive reaction that will help you stay positive? You know what I mean? It's so yeah, that's really interesting because you know, if we're what we're learning is structural readjustment, as soon as we start to do physically the exercises that then adjust us structurally, then not it's going to affect our behavior in the sense that it's going to shift our moods and we're going to have a more um, happier and joyful way of seeing the world because our body isn't under tension anymore. Exactly. So it does make sense. Yes, exactly. So the, the posture doesn't only affect uh, uh, you know, how we feel and how we, uh, how we uh, act and our health, but it also affects how we look, how we, how we show up in the world and how the world is going to see us. Like if you walk into a room like this, or if you walk into a room like this, it's a whole different, a whole different um, energy. Okay, so it shows self confidence, self esteem. You know, so the posture is huge. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's yeah, absolutely. And the beauty of what you're saying, and that the chicken and the egg is, you know, you know, is that the uh, if you catch yourself in a certain posture in a certain mood, by changing your posture, you can actually kick yourself out of the mood, which is a nice way of looking at that. So you know we're not entrapped by our body. We can we can uh, listen to our body and change the way that we're standing up or leaning forward. And I, I know the whole tension of you know sitting forward in your desk or sitting forward while you're driving is tension. Somehow you feel that if you lean forward and grip the steering wheel that somehow you're going to be a better driver or a safe driver you know I, I we have all this conditioning about what it means to show up in the world and like you said in the now moment when you relax the body let it you know sit back in your seat relax your arms and the car can essentially drive itself because you're more one with the car you're not all tensed up so yeah it's really 
learning to read your body. You know, am I tense or am I relaxed? Or, you know, where am I? And, and we get to change it, which is the beauty of it, right? We don't. Absolutely. It gives us a tool to, it gives us a tool to take action. Yeah. To make a difference. And I love that. Okay. And again, you know, when the secret came out, it's all about positive thinking and, we, and it's great, you know, but again, uh, intention, wishing, dreaming, uh, you know, visualizing, you need to take action to do something that is gets grounded in the physical body. And I love the fact that we can, that we have actually tools like what I'm talking about with a, with a strength training system that you can do it in consciousness to start making those, those, those shifts in the body because you know the the closest thing that i can think of that has that connection between uh, a, an exercise modality and a spiritual practice is really yoga okay mm -hmm. but but mm -hmm. yoga has changed tremendously originally it wasn't an exercise it was a physical practice that people were doing to achieve enlightenment you know and it through the through the years it became kind of so um, you know, with marketing, it, get, it became so commercialized that it just became kind of like an exercise thing, you know. And but a lot, but what got me to to really think about these esoteric principles of bodybuilding, and especially when I met Stephen and and got involved with this with this with this program, is that we can use actually we can use anything in our life to make those those changes and to achieve enlightenment and and why is it yoga why can't it be bodybuilding if you do it in consciousness you can have the same connections and you can achieve the same you know that you can still you can achieve the same results and this is very profound uh for me, you know, anyways. So, so anyways, so since we've talked and we approached the uh, posture from a more physical um, uh, direction, I want to now integrate it with chakras and the way I understand it or the way I can see it. And I know you're, that's kind of like your neck of the woods, right? <laughs> you love that. And I'm, and I'm really excited to have this conversation with you because I know you're going to probably be able to, uh, give me a lot of feed feedback or give the listeners. So first of all, the chakras, I think that we are pretty much all aware, you know, chakras is something that now is also one of those terms that's very commercialized. Everybody talk about the chakras, but let's take a basic look at it. The chakras are really energy centers within the body and they can be um, visualized as like a cone that spins you know, inside the body, and they are uh, aligned really along the spine. Okay, so the the and I'm trying to make this not too complicated in my explanation, so that you know most people can understand it, even if they're not that familiar with the concept. But what happens is the chakras are the energy uh, centers that connect the spiritual to the body. In, in in essence, right? And yeah. would you say that that I'm? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So so they are along the spine, and the spine uh, is actually like a power line. You know, so you have the power line of the body. The chakras are lined along the the spine, and they it's like a spread energy throughout the body, throughout the meridians of the body uh, to, to, pro to produce the energy we need to, to, to be alive. It affects the body, mind, and spirit. It's, it makes that connection. So in, in essence, the, the chakra system is comparable to the nervous system of the body. We talked about the nervous system in our in our second episode with the grounding right the nervous system uh connects all the movement the thoughts and, and we talked about when it's put on overload it can uh, um 
like blow a fuse, you know, we connect, we kind of made a connection between the, the nervous system and the electrical panel in the house. And in, in a way, the chakra system is a little bit like that as well, but sp spiritually. That's yeah, if you were able to uh, see the energy coming off electricity or or a round of flow of energy, you would see that there's colors to it. And that's that field that's, you know, the electricity electricity is running through the wires or running through the electromagnetic, you know, aspect of your body, the nervous system, but the energy field around it, that auric field uh, that surrounds it is a, that what we're talking about as the aura or making up the different chakras, one nested upon the other, upon the other. And that, that has a glow to it, has an energetic field that some people can actually see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, so when we have um, trauma or illnesses or, um, you know, stress, whatever happens in the lifestyle, um, pain, hurt, emotional, whether it comes from this lifetime or past lives, then what happens is the the chakras, first of all, they can change color. They they yes. uh, they become maybe more dense, and they spin at a lower frequencies. And you could kind of say that they collapse in a sense. Yeah. You could definitely say that. And if you're a, a dowser or a muscle tester, you can actually test, you know, uh, at what level of frequency on a scale of zero to a hundred is your is your chakra or the all of your chakras or individual chakra operating, operating at, well, which will give you some insight if you understand the basics of chakra, what's going on emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually of how you're dealing with the energy that's flowing into your body and energy that you're flowing back into the universe, which essentially creates the world that you live in. I mean, we create it with every thought, word, and deed. So this is really important stuff. So it's not just posture, and it's not just posture connected to energy, but the energy itself is really a determinant of how you are showing up in the world and how the world's going to show up for you. Yes. Thank you for saying that. We were right in sync here. That's really cool. And so now if I make a little bit of a connection between what we're talking about and we start connecting the dots and seeing how we can use bodybuilding to make a difference of how we could clear blockages and things like this, if you think about it this way, we have first the, the first chakra which is connected to the earth. It's the grounding chakra, right? Yeah. So when, when we... When we talked about the grounding principles in the first, in the in the second episode, we were talking about how you see now it's connecting. We were talking about how when we get into working out, we actually take the energy from the ground up. Okay, so when we start an exercise program with somebody, we would actually start with a leg press or something that would bring the energy from the ground that grounds you but the energy now is allowed to you have enough juice you're grounded to it pushes upward okay so when we do when we that's how we go about uh designing the programs for people so you connect it with the chakra and now it starts making sense because if you're not grounded then where where do you live you live outside the body or you live in your head yeah, right absolutely and, and 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 the other part of on the structural level like you would say is that if you don't have the muscular wherewithal in your legs and your lower torso then you uh, can't carry the upper part of your body and your posture is going to be misaligned so it's the physiological the spiritual and the emotional and the psychological are all intimately interconnected the beauty of this is when we do structural adjustment get grounded in the very first exercise, then everything else can start aligning to that grounding rod or that grounding connection or that flow of energy from the earth that comes back up through your feet and gives you that sense of being here in the present moment. 
Absolutely. So if we take it like a, a, a step further, so now we are, and we talked about this in the two last episode. We talked about it when we talked about not being grounding, how we live in our head. And then Stephen also in the last episode talked about the male and the female energy and how the thinking is male energy and the receiving and the, the, the love, all this is like female and thinking, doing, competing is male energy. So now let's look at how that might connect. Like we, we, we're walking around, not grounding, we live in our head, okay? So now instead of living and, and really operating from a place within our own body, we, we become talking, walking heads. You see the connection between posture? So we lead with the thoughts, not right. with, with the body. So that's where things start. You see, it's all related body, mind, spirit. So, so that's, so now is it about, again, what comes first, the chicken or the head? Is it because we are on our cell phones that we have a forward head posture or is it because we have lost the ability to be grounded and be in our center of our body and that could also help to have our body aligned and our neck back into place? Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, leading with your head, you know, trying to, it's sort of like, I'm trying to figure something out. I'm trying to intellectualize this. I'm trying to, you know, the pros and the cons and this, should I move? Whereas when you're in your body and you're relaxed, your head comes back. Mm -hmm. You're now, a lot of that spiritual aspect, now the energy can flow through the crown chakra and you can be inspired. You can have exactly. an aha. You can say, whoa, that's what I can do. And it's very easy. It doesn't come from sticking your neck forward or trying to figure it out or getting stressed out or getting upset or angry. It comes from bringing your chest out and bringing your, mm -hmm. your muscles your back and relaxing all that so that your head is resting on your shoulders and it's aligned so that your chest is open and you're open to receive in your heart. Exactly. Yeah, it makes really exactly. good sense what you're it's, saying. And so now that we're talking about the heart, let's let's look at that. Okay, the heart is obviously the 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 space for the heart chakra. Okay, and really spiritually speaking, we learn that uh, everything is love. Love is the answer, right? Which it is. That's actually the last thing my mother said before she died. She said, you know. I found the answer. Love is the answer. And I think she's right. <laughs> so, oh, no, she, I mean, if it was right for the Beatles, it's right for everybody. Right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All you need is love. All you need is love. That's it. <laughs> so let's, let's look at what that, what's happening with that. So really spiritually speaking, then we, we ought to um, lead with the heart. Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. We got to lead with our heart. Yeah. yeah. So, so that it's exactly what you talked about, what you meant, opening the chest and really leading with the heart. But when we have pain, um, unresolved issues, we talked about that. Then we seem to uh, be, you know, we are protecting our heart. In other words, we walk with a closed heart. But let's look at it from a muscular uh, point of view. If the muscles in your back are not there, underdeveloped or are put in the wrong position, then the back cannot support the open heart. You see, it, it takes those muscles. You see, people say, uh, you talk about posture and everybody go like this, you know? And, and then, yeah, like this. And then two minutes later, they're like this, okay? You can't think and will good posture it doesn't work like this you can no. only th you can only think about it for a minute and then it's gone right so muscular exactly so muscularly speaking you need to have those muscles developed in your back so that it opens up so that it open so that you can stay with an open heart you see so that's yeah, why that's why in our programs, 
we put a lot of emphasis in uh, developing the back. You know, as a matter of fact, Stephen is the king of the nice backs. <laughs> he has a collection of pictures of hundreds of people with these beautiful backs. It's a, but when you, when you think about it, you know, because everybody wants the, the uh, six-pack ab or the muscle, you know, the uh, mm. bicep or whatever. But the back, you know, it, it supports your heart in a sense, you know. So that's, that's another connection with the heart chakras and how we can now live in consciousness and use these tools to, to really put together the pieces and not only visualize an open heart, but do something physically so that we can actually present ourselves in the world with, you know, openly and, and, and hold that presence. Yes. Yeah, opening their chest and being able to receive, I think for a lot of people is scary, you know, like really pulling your shoulders back and allowing your ribs to expand and, you know, without being cocky. I mean, there, there's the cockiness of the rooster, you know, where you've got your chest pumped up. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that relaxed chest opening where the heart has room to beat and expand and isn't contracted by the, by the rib cage and the muscles that are constricting its movement. So, you know, there's that delicate balance, but it comes, like you say, from those muscles being balanced in a way to be able to carry that. Exactly, exactly. So, so uh, you know, energetically speaking, of course, there's a lot of uh, things why emotionally and energetically people are walking like this, you know? So this is what, and in spirituality, and I know you're very well aware of that, we learn tools of uh, releasing uh, these emotions through certain exercises or some tools like uh, hypnosis or like, um, like I talked about in, this, in the second episode about working with colors and releasing the colors if we don't exactly know where the emotions come from. Uh, you know, so there, there's a lot of tools available in um, and in your academy I'm sure you provide a lot of tools to, to, to release these energy right am I right yeah absolutely my nickname is called the energy detective so I'm interested in helping people understand how how their energy system works how their bioenergy system works and how it gets negatively impact and how to strengthen it and you know while it was basically coming from a a bioelectrical spiritual uh, perspective. Now that you know I'm doing this program, I see the physiological aspects of it and how it fits. This is why I'm really excited about this being a, an ongoing opportunity for people in Extraordinary Healing Academy to understand the co-creative interconnection between spirit and body through structural realignment of the body and your ability to be able to, you know, uh, achieve the the clear Kundalini channel up your spine, right, for the energy to flow unencumbered. So if enlightenment is what your goal is in this lifetime, you have the physiological ability, the structure in the neuromuscular uh, whole memory system to allow you to do that. Because without that, you will just burn your cylinders. You'll just have too much energy, divine energy flowing through your circuits and your body won't be able to handle it. So this is really important. If you're on a spiritual mission and you want to become enlightened or help other people, then you've got to have your body structurally aligned or it won't be able to carry the energy. Exactly. That's how I, I see it. I, I absolutely I could have said it better. So what, what I am um, putting to, on the table really is the, the tool or the opportunity to use, to combine the tools that you teach or that are taught in energy clearing and combine them with the practice of, in this instance, bodybuilding. And of course, not, not every exercise modality is created the same. Not, as, as you know, you can see around what people are doing. It's not grounding, you know, it's not about grounding, it's not about posture, it's not about any of this. When you can have a specific program, a specific system that addresses those uh, points, 
And now you can do them, go to the gym and in consciousness combine them with tools of clearing energy, with breathing, which is another topic that we're going to talk about because breathing is super important. Then now you can really make the connection between the body, mind and spirit and clearing all these blockages and get to the next um, evolutionary um, path. That it, to me, this is the next path to, to evolution. Yeah, this is, the, this is the short path to enlightenment. You know, you can do the long path as lifetime after lifetime, struggle after struggle, overcoming your karma, you know, or you can wake up in this moment, in this lifetime, and take a look at, well, what does it involve in the process of becoming enlightenment? Yes, serving other people, uh, being benevolent as part of that, but also being able to be at love or be at home physically in this body, in this incarnation. This is where it's all about. It's not in the after world. It's right here, right now. Exactly. So exactly. loving your body, knowing how to strengthen your body knowing how your body operates giving it the fuel and nourishment and exercise that it needs in a way in which the body can learn and grow and support your spiritual aspiration is really what the goal is all about and to it's something that takes some consciousness and a program like structural readjustment to allow your muscles to understand what it means to be in the right place at the right time. I mean, that may sound strange, but uh, but it is. It's a physiological knowingness. It's an aha when your body knows what it feels like to be at rest. And unless it knows that and feels that, it can't go back to that. It can't find its way back to that neutral point. And therefore, if you're not in neutral, you can't re-nourish your body and you can't sleep properly and you can't recharge your batteries. So, yeah, this is really important stuff, and I thank you for bringing this up. So well, you were talking – yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, it's just – I know that one of the questions I'm supposed to be asking you is the do's and don'ts for achieving good posture, and I know that you want to give us some, you know, some insights and tips around, all right, we get that this is really, really important on multiple levels, right? On, in fact, yeah. on every level of our being. So now, now that we know this, now what can we, you know, what can we do about this? How can we start to achieve good posture? Okay, so okay, there's, so uh, there's uh, the first, the first step, the first step is to actually, actually kind of know where your posture is at. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, even sometimes we talk to people and they they say, uh, oh, I have good posture. My father was in the army and I was brought up, and they don't have good posture, you know. So sometimes we have dysmorphia about the way we look or, or how, how we stand. So if you take a picture of your body, then that, that's pretty revealing. You know, just standing normally and just taking a picture from the front, from the side to see where the neck falls. And, and that would be the, the first thing to do to, to be aware, okay? The second thing to to do is to again what we talked about earlier is to become more conscious on daily basis of how you hold yourself in the world right and and that has just simply to have to do with living in the now right okay living in the now not in the head right Right. And 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 just be more conscious about biomechanically how you hold, how you carry boxes, how you do things, so that you become more in the body and not so outside the body. Mm -hmm. People live outside their body. Um, in terms of exercise selection, uh, there are like things when you are working out, or if you are on our program, then perfect because then you have the right tools the right sequence of, of exercise that you do so yeah for you if you're not then and you do exercise then now that you have seen the picture of what where you're at where is your postural alignment at then whatever exercise that you're going to do you're going to use the opposing principle that means that 
if uh, your posture is like this, then when you are exercising, then you are going to try to do everything the opposite way. Okay. So, for example, uh, if you are like this and now you want to do a, um, a bicep curl or something like this, then avoid an exercise that's going to make you like this. You know, like if the bench, if you have a bench and you got to lean on the bench like this to do your leg curl, then that's not going to help you. You know, you need to find uh, a way of inside the equipment where your back can be protected or find a different way of doing the movement, maybe on a bench where your back is back and then you can do the movement like this. So you got you to use common sense that whatever you're doing in your exercise program, then you need to find a way where you're going to work the other way of where your posture is going. You know? No, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're looking for that balance in a, in a neuromuscular center as, a, as the body comes back to balance. So if you're bored like this, you want to strengthen the, the back muscles to allow your head to come back and be supported on your shoulders. Exactly. Like a, an example is, for example, a lat pull down. Okay. Yeah. So the person is like this. They go to a lat pull down, they hold on to the bar, and they do the pull down like this. That's not going to help. Then no. what we teach the people is to turn back to the machine. Okay. So now they are stretched back. And now they're going to pull down and they're going to work backwards. You see, so uh, of course we have the we have the protocol. So in our system, we have the exercises and the sequences. But it works. It works like on everything. I mean, like this. If you have bad posture and you're like this, then don't go cycling on the cycling class. You're mm. slumped over like this, and you're gonna. It's just gonna make it worse. Worse. So it's about logic a lot. You know, yeah. a lot about logic. And also the exercise um, selection is very important. For example, if you are doing a, a good posture exercise, uh, don't follow it up with a crunch. Right, right. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so uh, if you expanded your muscles by strengthening your back, then leave them expanded. When you leave the gym, don't do anything that, brings you back to where you were before. You want to learn what it feels like when you walk out of the gym of being in the right position so your body can entrain to that and say, wow, that feels good. I want to go back and do more of that. Not, oh, my God, I'm back to where I was. So exactly. yeah, again, you have to be very careful in your sequence and where you leave your body so it feels like, wow, that was really worth you know, going to the gym. I feel grand, right? Not like, oh. You know, like most people, they sort of stagger out of the, the gym because they feel that they become some sort of he-man while they were there, right? And they yes. have to be exhausted, or otherwise they didn't accomplish anything. Exactly. And uh, another thing uh, is uh, walking lunges. We talked about this in another episode, you know. Now you've done a, a great uh, grounding exercise. You've done your leg press. You're strong. You brought the energy from the ground. Now you're ready to go, right? And then you're going to get up, take two dumbbells in your hands, and start doing walking lunges in the gym like this. Yeah. You know, the, the, the leg press has, has put you back in place, has strengthened your hips, uh, and, and now you're ready to go. Then you need to follow the exercise with something that's going to enhance uh that you know and take that feeling to the next level uh, or and not put you out of balance out of alignment you know so a lot of a lot of uh, things is really logic you know but it's it starts with awareness and education because really not too many people talk about this mm -hmm. and so and there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh, new fads and new systems and uh, new ways of doing things every day. There's something new that happens, like the boot camps and the CrossFits and the whatever, where the more crazy you are, the more you think you're getting something done. And, it, you know, and it's very confusing, okay, for people because it's, it's like uh, if you're not, if, if you're not, if, if this is not your field, 
of interest, then you can get like lost, right? Absolutely. Where's, where's the truth? I think that, like you said, it's simple. When I think about, you know, the first set of exercises uh, in the program that I've gone through, you know, you really are strengthening your legs, you're getting grounded, and then you start moving up through the torso. You know, it's like you don't do anything in the upper body until you've got yourself really the muscular strength in the bottom part to mm -hmm. ground you to, to be able to do the upper exercises. And it isn't in, until the last set that you're actually doing anything with, you know, that has anything to do with leaning forward with your arms, you know. So it's, yes. it's there's a logical sequence and everything to build on the from the beginning that you're grounded, and then from the grounding you move up, sort of like up the spine using different sets of muscles, building on that ability to be grounded. So it all makes sense when you begin to think of it this way, of why the program is set up in the sequences of, that you have created. Yeah, you got it. That's great. So next week, uh, I, I wanted to, um, next week, what I want to talk about is uh, emotions, okay? Because it's in alignment with what we talked about today, and we talked about uh, blockages and, and uh, the chakra, how to clear the chakras, how to align, uh, you know, all this. And um, it seems logical to me to take a little closer look at emotion so we can really have um, more understanding and uh, tools to to see if there is uh, how can we clear this with this bodybuilding thing that we're talking about you know and so I'm gonna actually look at um, make connections between certain exercises and where the emotions are trapped in the body and why certain exercises can help in releasing those emotions. So we're going to just like stepping up a notch. And, and so it's a still in the, in the same um, line of what we talked about today, the chakras, the alignments, because it's, you know, it all comes down to one thing, right? It all comes down to becoming clear channels. And uh, and uh, so that's what I was planning for episode five. Great. So I'm just going to see if I can do a recap and you can interrupt me in the process uh, because the next thing you had was homework. And, and I know that that's sort of like a recap. So yes. number one, if you really want to know what's going on with your body, and better take some pictures and a full-length mirror, uh, you know, looking into the mirror sideways, have somebody take the pictures for you and your back. You'll see where your head is moving forward or back, whether your tummy is sticking out or not, whether your hips are rotated in and out or whether they're rotated to the right or the left. Just think of that straight line up the spine. Know that there needs to be an S curve in the spine sideways. Know that when you're looking at it the other way, there needs to be like a cross along the shoulders, one shoulder, can be above the other, you want to look for that. And as Batista said so eloquently, now that you see where it's not balanced this way or this way, then you want to come up with a, a program that allows you to strengthen the opposite of what is overextended or overused. You want to find that middle point, you want to find that balance. And so you can, you know, we encourage you to take the program, but there's nothing wrong with starting right away by doing an assessment yourself and, and seeing what's logical to do. Whatever you do, really start from the bottom up. Start by being really grounded, leg presses or whatever constraint to the lower part, part of your body. You may be even squats, whatever it takes to do that. It will give you the core strength and it will strengthen your spine so that you can do your upper body work and carry the weights as you move up the spine. Always think of moving up the spine. Don't lean forward into the exercise. Lean back so you're aligned. Be careful of the weights. This is not a physical fitness program in the sense of seeing how many weights you could do. This is doing it within the comfort level that you have. Just pushing a little bit, but not this. If you're grunting, you're groaning. You sound like a cow or whatever. You're doing it the wrong way. You're, you're overextending. So, so those are some of the things that I've learned so far in the program and also from listening to this, these interviews, which are really helpful to
to get a sense of, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing in the gym. So did I, is there anything else you want to add to that? Yes, there's one more thing I did. You, you said it great. Thank you for reminding me about the homework. I forgot. And you did it great. There's one more thing that I would like uh, as a homework, if you so yeah. want to do it, write it down. Write right. it down. It down. Write map. it down. Make a map of what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, write it down and then assess how do I feel? Is this really making me feel good? Uh, you know, how many sets? Right. You do? What did you do? How did you feel? And then make a calendar. I can't even talk enough about the calendar. I know people say, why do I have to? I know when I train, I train. On it. No, write it down. Write down how many times you've gone. When you see it in front of your eyes that you, that you exercise that day, that day, that day, that day something happened. Somebody died, your cat died, or something happened. You were stressed. And now you have your program that you've done, whatever it is, and you said, oh, I did this. Ooh, that didn't feel good. Now you start having a map. If it's in your head, it's in your head. If it's on paper, it's grounded, it's there, and it's something to look back at and to build on. Yes, absolutely. And don't forget to write your sequence down so that you know what's working with you, like how many reps did you do and what weight did you use in each rep and so that you can go back and build on that, know where you came from, know where you are in the moment, and gives you the next logical step of where you want to go. Exactly. So thank exactly. you. This is a great session. And same time, same place next week. I'm looking forward to carrying on the conversation. All so right. So until All then, right. be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Bye for now. Bye bye. In this 13 episode series, the Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding The Missing Links to Fitness Consciousness, with your host, Batista Germond, Master Builder, Bodybuilder and designer is co-hosted and produced by Tyson Bannigan and his guides www.thewellnessshow.ca and see the same time same place every Friday 2 p.m. Pacific time 5 p.m. Eastern Standard see you then bye for now